In this video for Math 98, we're going to cover topics that are covered on homework number one, covering section 11.1 .1 in the book. This is a review of ratios, rates, similarity, and trigonometry from Math 94. A ratio is a comparison between two or more like or unlike quantities. Here's an example. In a classroom, there are 40 boys and 30 girls. What is the ratio of boys to girls? Now notice this says boys to girls. So how many boys are there? Well, there's 40. And how many girls there are there? There's 30. So we could write this down as 40 to 30. Sometimes this is written down as 40 colon 30. And equivalently, that's written down as 40 over 30. Now, you can reduce this fraction to 4 thirds. So 4 thirds would be the answer that we would prefer as the ratio of boys to girls. In this case, you could also write this 4 colon 3, or say 4 to 3. This kind of means that if you had these 70 students in class, for every 4 boys, there's 3 girls. Now, ratios are pretty easy to deal with unless you have different units. Here's an example where we will simplify a ratio 150 centimeters to 2 meters. In the first example, boys to girls, both group, boys and girls, were the same thing, namely people. Here, we have two different units of measure. We need to, in order to compare them, have the same units. I have a preference to always go to the smaller unit. In this case, that would be centimeters. And you might remember that 100 centimeters equals 1 meter. So I'm going to take 2 meters and I'm going to multiply by 100 centimeters in 1 meter. Remember, if this equals this, I can divide both sides by 1 meter and this becomes 1. So here, the meter units divide out and you get 200 centimeters. So this problem becomes 150 centimeters to 200 centimeters. So that's going to be 150 over 200, which, how can we reduce that? Well, we could take 50, that would be 3 here and 4 here. So you would say 3 to 4 as your ratio, or 3 fourths. 10 yards to 100 feet. See if you can do that one yourself. You might want to pause the video now and then continue when you are finished. Remember the conversion factor between yards and feet. One yard is three feet. So I'm going to convert to the smaller unit, in this case feet. I'm going to take 10 yards and I'm going to multiply by three feet in one yard. The yards will divide out, and that gives me 30 feet. So we have 30 feet to 100 feet, which gives me 30 over 100, or 3 over 10, which also can be written 3 colon 10, or 3 to 10. So that's a bit with ratios. Here's some more examples we might try. Um, one half foot to three inches. I'm going to convert to the lower unit, which is inches. Now, I just happen to know that a half a foot, because there's 12 inches in a foot, is six inches. So six inches to three inches gives me two over one. So that's two to one. 4,000 grams to eight kilograms. Grams is a smaller unit. So I'm going to do 4,000 grams. There are 1,000 grams in one kilogram. So taking 8 kilograms, multiplying by 1,000, I have 8,000 grams. And this is 1 over 2, or 1 to 2. 35 ounces in 5 pounds. I need to tell you that there are 16 ounces in 1 pound. So let's convert, if I have 5 pounds, and I want to multiply by 16 ounces, 
one pound. 16 times 5 is 80 ounces. So 35 ounces over 80 ounces. And you can reduce this fraction dividing by 5 on top and bottom. That will give you 7 okay, over 16. So this would be 7 16 or 7 6 2 16. Now, we have been using the idea of unit analysis, and that is a good application of ratios and proportion. Let's try this unit analysis problem. 150 cubic feet is how many cubic yards? You might recall from Math 94 that a cubic unit is a unit in space. It's like a cube here. And one cubic yard would be this, one yard by one yard by one yard. How many cubic feet are in a cubic yard? Well, each yard is three feet, and three feet, and three feet. If you think about this, you could cut this yard lengthwise into three units, each a foot long. You can cut this yard lengthwise, each into three units, each a foot long. Of course, that cut would go across here, and that one would go across here. And then you can cut this side into three units, each a foot long. And this kind of looks like a Rubik's Cube, but what you have here is three times three times three, or three cubed cubic feet, or 27 cubic feet equals one cubic yard. So, if we have 150 cubic feet, we want to get rid of cubic feet and we want to put in cubic yards. So one cubic yard is 27 cubic feet. I need my calculator for this one. So I'll pull out my calculator, turn it on, and I have 150 divided by 27, and that gives me about 5.56. If you want to write that as a fraction, I'm going to hit my math key, hit number 1 for fraction, and that will give me 50 over 9 cubic yards. Okay, follow the directions on the problem as to how they want the final answer. Here's another unit analysis problem, maybe a little more practical and interesting for you. Suppose your car gets 24 miles per 1 gallon of gas and that it takes one hour to travel 55 miles. And one gallon of gas, so I'm going to write that down, one hour equals 55 miles. And one gallon of gas is equal to $3.49. And you drive for 10 hours each day. What is the cost of driving per day? Now, notice that what we want here is we want dollars per day in my final answer. And look at all the stuff that I'm given. I have miles per gallon and dollars per gallon and miles per hour and hours per day. So I'm going to start with $3.49 per one gallon of gas. Now, I know that one gallon equals 24 miles. So here, I would have the gallons divide out, and I would have dollars per mile. And then I know that we have 55 miles in one hour. Okay? And then I know that there are 10 hours in one day. If you look at these units, I finally have dollars over day. So I'm going to take my calculator again to try to do this. See if I can do this right here. I have $3.49 on top times 1 times 55 times 10. So I'm going to do that times 55 times 10. So that gives me that 1919.5. And I want to divide by 1 times 24 times 1 times 1. So I just want to divide this by 24. And that gives me $79 and about 98 cents per day. 
So this is $79.98 per day. Okay, what are some other things that we used ratios for? We talked about proportion. Proportion is just an equivalence between ratios. For example, here's a very simple one. Two-thirds equals six-ninths. We can all agree with that, that that is true. One property, this is called a proportion right here, an equivalence between two ratios. One property that proportions have is that when you cross multiply, they end up with the same number. Look at this, two times 19, two times nine, excuse me, is 18. And six times three is 18. So this is true about all proportions. That can be used to help us solve proportions. Here's an example. Solve this proportion. Well, if we believe that cross multiplication property, we can do 45 times x equals 4 times 20. So 45x equals 80, and x equals 80 over 45. Now, you should reduce that fraction, 80 over 45, to 16 ninths. Why don't you try this one on your own, stop the video now, and restart when you are ready. Okay, here I have 7 times x and 18 times 27. You might need your calculator to do 18 times 27. If you do 18 times 27, you'll get 486 equals 7x. Divide by 7 and you get 486 over 7. Now again, pay close attention to the instructions they may ask for a decimal. If they ask for a decimal, 69.429, let's say, if they asked for a decimal rounded to three decimal places. Proportions are useful in the application of similarity. Usually when we are talking about similarity, we are talking about triangles. Two triangles are similar if they have two angles equal. Basically, similar triangles have the same shape but different sizes. And one other fact about similar triangles is the sides are proportional. It's as if you took the triangle, put it in a Xerox machine, and made it larger or smaller. It would still have the same proportions of each side. So I'm going to look at this problem from WebAssign. Try to zoom in just a little for you here. Find the unknown sides in the similar triangles shown. Since sides are proportional, you look at this, you'll notice these two angles are the same. That means these two sides are what we call corresponding. And these two angles are the same. That means these two sides in these two triangles are called corresponding. And of course, then these two angles are the same, so these sides are corresponding. If you take the ratio of the corresponding sides that you know, 16 over 12, for example, and you set that equal to the same ratio of the si of sides that you don't know, 12 over b, for example, this gives you a proportion that you can use to solve this problem. I'm going to cross multiply. I get 16b equals 12 times 12, which is 144. That gives you b equals 9. So b is 9. Now, what about a? Why don't you try to find A on your own and restart the video when you're ready. To find A, I'm going to use my 16 and 12 again. And A over 8. Notice if this triangle is compared to this triangle, I have to do the same order on this side of the equation also. And that gives you 8 times 16, which is 128 equals a times 12, and that gives you 128 divided by 12, or if you reduce that fraction, a is 32 over 3. Okay, let's take a look at another example on similarity that you may have seen in the last class. So, here's one right here. 
The ratios of the base to height for similar triangles are equal. With the help of the figure below, set up proportions to describe the situation and answer the question. Round your answer to the nearest tenth. A 30-foot searchlight here, so this is 30 feet, casts a shadow six foot tall person. Okay, so this is six feet tall. The person is standing 10 feet from the base of the street light, so this is 10 feet. How long is the shadow? So you'll notice here that we have two triangles. If we assume the person is standing straight up and that the street light is straight up, these are both right angles, and both triangles share this angle. I'm going to draw these triangles outside of the picture. So here's the street light triangle. It's 30 feet. You have a right angle here, and you have this angle here. And here's the person triangle, and that's 6 feet, and you have the shadow here. I'm going to call the shadow X, okay? If the shadow is X, how long is this side? Well, it's X plus 10. Now, these two triangles are similar because they both have a right angle and they both share this angle. So they are two triangles with two angles the same. We can set up a proportion. So let's do it. It would be, let's go 30 over 6 equals x plus 10 over x. Now to finish this, we're just going to cross multiply. So 30 times x equals 6 times x plus 10. Notice the parentheses here. I'm multiplying the 6 by the entire quantity. 30x equals 6x plus 60. Okay, I'm going to subtract 6x from both sides. I get 24x equals 60. Move that up a little. So x equals 60 over 24. Using your calculator, 60 divided by 24 is 2.5. So her shadow is 2.5 feet long is the answer to this question. One last example of a problem from Math 94, which dealt with proportions and similarity and ratios was the concept of trigonometry. Trigonometry only applies, at least what we did in Math 94, to right triangles. A right triangle has a right angle. And there are two other angles in your triangle. I've called this angle, angle A. If you are standing at angle A, this side is the opposite side. This side is the adjacent side. And this side, opposite the 90 degree angle, is the hypotenuse. And we have three ratios that were set up by the ancient Greeks that are useful. Those are the sine of A, which is denoted S-I-N parentheses A, N parentheses, which is the opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosine of A, which is denoted COS parentheses A, end parentheses, which is the adjacent over hypotenuse, and the tangent of A, which is written T-A-N parentheses A, end parentheses, which is the opposite over the adjacent. Now, we can remember this by using this acronym, SOKATOA. SOKATOA stands for sine opposite over hypotenuse, cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent opposite over adjacent. We can use these to help us solve triangle problems. For example, here's a problem from WebAssign. Find the missing angle and the sides of the given triangle. Round your answers to the nearest hundred as needed. Now, this is 90 degrees, this is 30 degrees. What is this angle? Well, the sum of the angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. You know you have a 90 degree angle, and you have a 30 degree angle. And if I call this A, and this B, and this C, then angle B, well, let's see what that has to be. This is 120, 
plus angle B equals 180. Subtracting 120 from both sides, that gives us that this angle is 60. Now, if I position myself at the 30 degree angle, and by the way, you don't have to. You could position yourself here. But if I choose to position myself at the 30 degree angle, this is the opposite side. This is the adjacent side. And this is the hypotenuse. This is what we call the base. This is what we call the height. So we want the base and the height. We figured out the angle is 60. For the base, that's the adjacent side to my 30 degree angle. What am I given? I'm given the hypotenuse. So I want to work with adjacent and hypotenuse. Which trig function works with adjacent and hypotenuse? That is cosine. So I can say cosine 30 equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Well, I don't want to keep writing adjacent, so I'm going to call it x. So that would be x over 12. So cosine of 30 equals x over 12. To solve this, I multiply both sides by 12. And now I need my calculator. Well, for your calculator, you ought to check that you are in degree mode. Pressing the mode button lets you check that you are in degree mode. If you are not in degree mode, use your arrow keys to go down to degree and hit enter. Then hit second mode to quit. I'm going to clear the screen. I would like 12 cosine of 30 to give me my value of x. So 12 cosine 30 gives me 10.3923048. I'm supposed to round to the nearest hundredth, so that's going to be 10.39 for x. OK, what about the opposite side, the height? We'll call that y. Why don't you see if you can do that problem, and then start the video when you're finished. OK, if I position myself at 30 again, this is the opposite, and this is the hypotenuse. Opposite I want, hypotenuse I'm given. So I'm going to use the trig ratio that involves opposite and hypotenuse. So katoa tells us that is sine. So I'm going to use sine of 30 equals opposite, which is y, over 12. Now multiply both sides by 12, and I get 12 sine of 30. Now. Going back to my calculator here, 12 sine 30 is 6. So y is 6. I hope you have found this video useful.